Hey, a lot of people talking about this right now, too. A Twitter account that regularly went viral for posting these hyper-liberal viewpoints is probably a fake. That, according to the Washington Post, Erica Marsh, who called herself a proud Democrat, claimed that she worked for the Biden campaign and volunteered at the Obama Foundation. She racked up more than 130,000 followers, posting polarizing viewpoints that often painted the left in a really unflattering light. But experts say there likely is no Erica Marsh. That account was suspended without explanation this week. The Post reporting neither the Biden campaign nor the Obama Foundation have any records of her ever working for them. And experts say her profile photos show signs of being digitally manipulated. And I want to bring in our guest today, Batia Ungar Sargon, is the deputy opinion editor of Newsweek. Um, Batia, we have a, a lot to break down here. Thanks for being with us. Thank you for having me. So depending on who you are on Twitter, you probably either loved her, you hated her, maybe somewhere in the middle, but she's eerie, right? I mean, we've only seen a couple of pictures of her. We've never actually seen her talking on, on Twitter or even her TikTok. She says she doesn't share much about herself personally because of a, you know, a social media stalker. So how likely is it that this is a fake person and a fake account, Batia? Um, I'm going to tell you something that your listeners and your viewers already know, but they will not hear on any other cable news channel, which is that as Americans, more unites us than divides us. And so when you see something that is absolutely enraging on social media, um, not only is it likely to be fake, but um, somebody just made a million dollars every time you get enraged at a stranger on social media. Because the truth is, there is so much common ground here. And what this bot, it seems, was doing was taking the liberal leftist position and amping it up into the most extreme, ridiculous version of itself. For example, you know, with the Supreme Court uh, ruling on affirmative action, more unites us than divides us. 75% of Americans are against affirmative action. Okay, talk about a wild consensus. So what does she do? She tweets that black people will not be able to succeed if we don't have affirmative action. Even the vast majority of leftists who support affirmative action don't believe that. So I just yes. urge your viewers, you know, take a beat when you see this kind of nonsense out and there because so much more unites us than divides agreed. us. Thank you for saying that, too. The other thing, you know, there, there, she cheered on the death of a January 6th protester. I mean, incendiary posts and messages. But you bring up a good point about, you know, kind of enraging posts. There, there's a spotlight on this trend called rage baiting. And mm -hmm. you post something so fiery, so incendiary, it forces people to respond. Then you go viral in the process. We heard about this issue after the 2016 campaign when Russia's so-called, all, all those troll farms sought to influence the yeah. political debate. Is the, I guess my question to you, Batia, is this making civil debate in our country absolutely impossible? I mean, I don't think it is because I think the American people, I give them much more credit than that, which is why I was always skeptical of this Russia interference narrative because, you know, the burden of proof there was, you didn't have to just show that there were bots. You had to show that the bots changed people's minds and changed people's votes, which I don't think they did. We all know why President Trump won, and it was because the working class has been erased in this country. So I, I, I do think that it's, you know, these things are bad. I mean, it makes people angry, but at the end of the day, I am betting on the American people because of what I said before, more unites us than divides us. And in right. our hearts, we know that. And, and Batia, you know, Erica Marsh might be fake, but there are other people posting similar things online who are real. Who believe So how do we parse out who is real and who is a bot? Honestly, I mean, the worst takes on affirmative action came from members of the squad, right? Like elected officials. They're obviously real and have terrible opinions. But I, I mean, look, at the end of the day, um, the American people are good people, even people you disagree with. They're coming at things from a good place, even if they're disastrously, disastrously wrong. And so we have to recommit to just the hard work of persuasion instead of banning, instead of censoring at the end of the day. And I think, you know, just a few seconds left, Batia, you know, what are you think about the the people who read these tweets, who retweeted it, who agreed, who, you know, quote tweeted it too. Are people willing to ignore the red flags uh, and the, the fact that it might be a, a fake when it fits their own personal agenda and their own personal politics? 
A hundred percent, especially people who feel erased from the political scene, people who feel censored, people who feel like they don't have a voice. When you feel erased, I mean, it's psychologically obvious, right? You you want to believe the worst of the people who you feel have the power and who you feel are erasing you and your interests and making life worse for your children. So, but I, again, I just urge everybody, take a beat. Let's not believe the worst. Even Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.